you know, I'm happy that in this country, there's so much faith in Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, such that when there are challenges with the economy, um, the average man on the street says that we want to hear from him. That is an indication that there's a lot of confidence. And hours before he spoke, the whole Ghana, when you go on Twitter, social media, everybody wanted to listen to him. And that is a very good sign for a leader and a politician. My brother Samin Jeffy started by saying that uh, he was deceitful more or less in the two and a half hour speech and uh, he was insincere and all that. As for that one, uh, I believe it's a prejudice that existed before even the speech. <laughs> so maybe I'll look at the specific figures that uh, he will challenge when we start the debate. But let me just say that Dr. Baumia did an excellent job at telling us where we came from, where we were as a country before COVID struck us and the world, and where we are now in terms of recovery and the way forward. And Jifa, just a quick preview, just 30 seconds of the Ghana we had when JM was in charge. It was a Ghana that had lending rates, and I'm happy doctor is here. Lending rates were on the roof. Some banks were giving commercially at 30%. Inflation was about 15%. The, the, the Ghana that JM gave us, growth had shrunk from about 14% in 2012 all the way to about 3.5% of GDP. The Ghana we had had a fiscal deficit that was about 9.3% of GDP. These are signs and indicators you use to look at the health of the economy. In fact, the Ghana we had had run to the IMF for credibility policy credibility, because they were not disciplined fiscally. That is the Ghana we had under JM and his, uh, uh, his uh, children, Sami and the rest. What happened in 2017, Jifa? In 2017, within a year, growth doubled to about 7% of GDP. And by the way, growth tells you averagely the activities that are happening within the economy. And when you hear that growth has gone up, there's a positive growth. It translates into wealth creation and opportunities. That is what growth means. So this was a country, in fact, 2019, World Investment Report by UNCTAD showed that Ghana was the number one destination of foreign direct investment in West Africa. That is the kind of country we had before COVID struck. And when COVID struck, what happened to us? For the first time in many decades, I can ask you, Jifa, whether you remember the last time Ghana's airport was closed for close to six months plus. Go and check. It will be over 50 years plus. When was the last time all citizens were asked to be indoors for three weeks? When was the last time in Ghana that stadia were closed for close to one year? When was the last time? So if you have a woman who is selling watch at the stadia, that woman will start to suffer. If you have someone who rents canopies for funerals, that family will start to suffer. If you have, check with the car rental companies. They eventually went aground. It was not the making of Kenoforata, Dr. Baumia, or Ekufuado. The world was in crisis. And I'm happy again that doctor is here. When you have to choose between fiscal consolidation, that is spending only what you have, and protecting lives, which one would you choose? This president, Ekufuado, decided to choose protecting lives and livelihoods against economic fiscal, uh, discipline. That's what we did. So we spent more money we didn't have. We borrowed. So we, we, there was a shortfall in revenue. By the way, not only the airports were closed, even the harbor. Activity came to less than 5% of its original. So Jifa, Dr. Baumier reminded us that Ghana was on a stable path to progress until we were all hit with a crisis. And he didn't stop there. Then he came to recovery. The last quarter of 2020, growth in Ghana was 0.4%. Last quarter, 2021, 0 0.4. 2021, it has bounced to 5%. What I'm happy about, he also told us the good news. The good news is that we are recovering. Now, the 5% tells you that at least our hotel, those guys who are home because of COVID, now they are back to the hotel, they are working. The visitors who stayed away from Ghana because the airports were closed are now coming in. Activity is picking up. That woman is now selling a watch at the stadium. Life was hard. Now she will start making some inflows. So 
what I would say and end here for us to continue the discussion is that I am happy, and Jifa, this is key, that in the midst of all these challenges, we are a country that is still able to pay our salaries as in government workers. I am happy that we are able to pay the independent power producers to keep our lights on. Jifa, you are, your generator is not on. Power is coming from the state still. I am happy that kids are still going to school with the budget being funded by the state. I mean the free SHS. It's not a small budget. It was not paid for previously by the Mama government. We instituted it. In the midst of this crisis, you would assume that, oh, we'll start falling short and say, now, go and pay fees. That social net is still there. Once all these basics are still there, citizens can come together, build on it, and create wealth again. We are coming out of the crisis. By the way, you, you and I are here because we've been vaccinated, unless you've chosen not to be. No. It is the coverage the state gave that has allowed us to take off our mask, come to the studio, and try to work again. So please, a politician would let you know or create the impression that COVID has not done anything. The reason is very simple. That politician wants power. But when you meet an economist who is not looking for power, they will tell you it was wise to build debts, to throw the economy out of gear, but to keep lives and livelihoods in place. Now that we are alive, we can go back to wealth creation.